All right, let's turn to Brian Lilly, host of Byline, right here on Sun News Network to kick this around a little bit. Um, if, as we've just been talking about, you know, the job numbers, you can pick and tear away at them. Christy Clark and the Liberals are saying, hey, look, the unemployment rate is 6.4%, uh, 9,500 jobs added in the month in uh, British Columbia, uh, to which I'd say 6.4%, that's great, but you're in the west of this country where the economy is booming and every other western province has a lower uh, unemployment rate, yep. including the new Democrats in Manitoba. Yeah, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, they all survived the recession very Saskatchewan well. Saskatchewan Alberta, they're down at 4% unemployment. Exactly. And for a little while ago, it was 3.8% yeah. in Saskatchewan. They never really went above 5%. And if they did, it was a small blip and then damp, bam, back under 5%. That is true full employment. At 5%, you're talking about people that are switching jobs, they're laid off, they're getting a new one, they quit because they want to sort of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, the underlying numbers in this case with Christy Clark are not good because most of the jobs being created are public sector jobs and the private sector is bleeding jobs. Well, maybe bleeding, it's a slow drip bleed, but they're bleeding 42, jobs. 42,000 private sector jobs over a went year. poof over the last year. Yeah, now... That's a it, lot. Would it be better or worse under the New Democrats? That's tough to say at this point. My guess is it, was, it would be worse because they believe in more government programs. They want to bring in a, a Quebec-style daycare system. And so the, the government jobs would continue to go, grow. Well, that's a drain on the rest of the private sector economy because it means higher taxes. But you know what? Perception matters more than reality in this case. Mm -hmm. The Obama job numbers came out last week. It showed that un unemployment fell to 7.5%. The underlying numbers weren't good. There were a lot of people that quit working, a lot of people who were still only working part-time and not by choice. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something they measure in the States. And it still sent the stock market soaring to 15,000 people. People were ecstatic that the jobs numbers were good. Perception is everything you're right. And Clark, if she's done anything in this campaign, has branded herself as she's best for the economy. You, we could argue that she may not be. There's data that shows it's ambivalent at best. In any event, that's the brand for her. Here's Christy Clark today on the campaign trail trying to say again that she's better than the alternative. The last time we had an NDP government in British Columbia was when the rest of Canada was undergoing a huge economic expansion. And so when we became a have-not province and had to depend on the rest of the country to support us, it wasn't, um, it wasn't great for the rest of the country. But it, maybe it wasn't so hard for them to do it because they were wealthy. Here we are today when there are two large provinces that are contributing to Confederation, us and Alberta. Canada cannot do without British Columbia again. Now, I like that line, Canada cannot do without British Columbia again, but she talks about the last time the NDP were in power, the rest of the country is expanding, blah, blah, blah. But let's look at what the rest of the country was doing right. in the year that uh, Christy Clark had anemic job creation. You've heard Stephen Harper in the House of Commons how many times? Like about every day? Created 450,000 jobs. That's the Canadian economy in the last, since but, the recession. Unfortunately, is terrible. unfortunately, a lot of those job numbers have been here in Ottawa, mm -hmm. government job numbers. Government job numbers have, under to Stephen Harper okay. have gone yeah. up dramatically. It hasn't been in manufacturing in Ontario. Ontario and Quebec are still higher than they should be. And it's been in the private sector. It's been Saskatchewan, Al Alberta. Manitoba, Newfoundland, but, believe it or not, Newfoundland also, as well. But, yeah. Look, look at those. Uh, look at that backdrop with Christy mm -hmm. Clark, though. I don't know if we can the show that again. Ships. The container ships. Vancouver is a vitally important port. The NDP and their supporters are, uh, they are nervous about the idea of Vancouver becoming too busy, especially with ooh tankers, oil tankers. They don't like that, but they also don't like the other type of shipping. They don't like trade. Vancouver port being shut down would be a tremendous blow to the Canadian economy, both for import and export. The things that we get there are cheap Chinese goods that we all rely on now would become more expensive. Our exports would become more expensive. Under you Our know, economy's uh, got to grow. And here's something that BC ought to wake up and smell the, the coffee on. Today, India was telling Canadian exporters, saying, we, don't, we want your oil. This is India. We want your oil. We don't want it from a West Coast port. We want it shipped from Halifax. That is a whole west to east pipeline story. So, BC, you don't want to make it easy to get the oil out. We're getting the oil out. It's going to go out through Halifax on its way to India. Well, and, and you know, they're looking at all kinds of options in yeah. Alberta right now because if Keystone's turned down, Gateway's turned down, and Adrian Dix is premier, he has looked askance at even 
twinning an existing pipeline saying, oh, well, I'm not sure about that. Is it safe? A brand new pipeline running parallel to an existing one? Give me a break. Of course it's safe. But his supporters, or at least a good chunk of them, the active base does not like this idea. And so he could be shutting that down. And I mean, they're even looking at shipping it north through the Yukon and into Alaska to get it out to a port. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, Brian, you're going to be joining us on our election special all night on Tuesday. So you have a weekend to flip through Vancouver papers, I assume. Uh, yes, I will be doing that, and uh, we'll uh, chat with you from Vancouver on Monday. I can't wait. All right, Brian Lilly, thank you.